Hello. Who's all out there on Facebook land? Hello. Hello. Who's there with us today? Anybody? Is anybody here with us today? Hmm. Man, I'm feeling all alone. So sad. Wish I had some friends here. Man. Miss Tracy, I'm here. Hey, Joe, how's it going? Oh, I'm doing so good. Hi, friends. How's everybody out there? Oh, I bet they've been missing you, Joe. I know. I just wanted to say hi. I've been so busy. What have you been busy doing, Joe? Oh, I've been doing your experiments and your art and all the other cool stuff you've been posting. Oh, I'm so happy that you like all that stuff, Joe. Oh, it's so fun. Oh, well, you just wait, Joe. There's even more fun coming. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, you, ju you just wait, buddy. Lots to be excited. Hey, guess what? Do you see who's there? It's our daycare friends. Can you say hi? Oh, hi, daycare friends. How's everybody doing today? Oh, you know what? I saw a picture and they were helping poor Miss Haley do her homework. Oh, silly daycare kids. They are pretty silly. Well, I gotta go, boys and girls. I gotta do that. What did you, what did you post today? I haven't had a chance. Um, let's see. Oh, build it stuff, I think, today, Joe. Oh, I love the build it. Okay, bye, boys and girls. I gotta go. See you later. Well, that was fun. I'm so glad Joe could make it today. Well, kids, I have a really good book. I mean, I know we're all struggling a little with this online learning stuff, right? And maybe just a little bit, a little, little tiny bit, our parents are getting kind of on our nerves a little bit. And maybe you're thinking, my mom is trying to ruin my life. <laughs> Do you think so? I don't know. I absolutely love this book. I know, I know. It's one of my favorites. It is. But it, this is like really, really one of my favorites. And it is by Kate Pfeiffer and illustrated by Diane Good. This is my mom. Sure, she looks like a nice mom. She makes people smile. She makes people clean. She gives hungry people food. She takes people where they need to go, and then she picks them up and brings them home. She makes people's boo-boos stop hurting, and she helps people fall asleep when they can't. But if my mom is such a nice mom, why is she trying to ruin my life? Here are five ways that my mom is trying to ruin my life. Way one. She kisses me in front of my friends. She doesn't just kiss the top of my head. That wouldn't, that would be bad, but not so bad. My mom gives me kisses all over my face. Way number two. She stops by my school in the middle of the day, barges in my classroom and says, I thought Emma might be hot and would like a change in the, to these shorts. Like I would ever change my clothes in school. Way number three. She talks way too loud. Way number four. She never lets me eat any food that I think is good for me. Way number five. She worries about everything and never lets me do anything fun because I might get hurt, which I won't. I've decided it's time to stop my mother before she ruins the rest of my life. So I've come up with a plan. The first thing I'll do is I'll sneak out of the house when my mom isn't looking. Then I'll get on my bike and I'll pedal away as fast as I can. But what if my mom calls me and I don't answer? She'll figure out that I snuck out of the house and biked away, and she'll get in her car and catch up to me. This plan won't, plan won't work unless I sneak out of the house, get on my bike, pedal away as fast as I can, and then when she catches up to me, keep pedaling until I pedal down a steep hill into a muddy hole. 
Then she'll drive into that steep hill, into the muddy hole, and her car will get stuck. Hmm. Only I'll be stuck. The hill is so steep that I can't pedal my bike up it anyway. So my mom will have to get out of her car and push me on my bike up the hill. But then when I'm safely at the top of the hill, I'll start biking away as fast as I can. My mom will run after me, but I'll be pedaling so fast that she won't be able to keep up with me. So she'll stop and go to the police station and tell them her child has biked away. And then I'll look at her, they'll look at her and ask, is it because you were ruining her life? And she'll say, no, but they won't believe her. So they'll put her in jail for trying to ruin her life ruin my life and they'll tell her she gets to make one phone call and she'll call my dad who by the way is also trying to ruin my life only he does it in a different ways than my mother does this is how my dad is trying to ruin my life way one he makes me do my homework as soon as he gets home from work no matter what else i'm in the middle of doing Number two, he makes me turn off my light at eight o'clock at night, even if I'm not tired. Way number three, he makes me clean my room, even though it's already clean. So my dad will go to the police station to get my mother out of jail, but the police sergeant will see that he's trying to ruin my life too, and they'll arrest him. Then my mother and father will both be in jail, and my life will be perfect. Except I will have biked home and it'll be time for dinner and I'll be hungry, but there will be no one there to feed me. Then it'll be time to go to bed and there will be no one there to read me a story. Aww. There'll be no one there to give me a kiss goodnight and there will be no one there to tell me to turn off my light. And if I go to bed and I can't sleep because my light is still on and I suddenly get thirsty, there will be no one there to bring me a glass of water. And then, if I fall asleep and I have a bad dream, because I went to sleep hungry and without any stories and nothing to drink, there will be no one there to hug me and say it's just a dream. And I will be scared. Really scared. If my parents are both in jail, my life will be ruined. Mom, Dad, I love you. <laughs> what do you guys think about that one? Even though through all this long distance learning and stuff, we kind of think our parents might be hard on us. Maybe not. Maybe so. You still love them, right? Because we still love you. Air hugs. Air hugs. Ooh, 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 ooh. I love you all. I have another one. Um, yeah, I'm going to have you pick, okay? Shoot me a heart or a thumbs up, whatever you want, for if you want me to read robot, okay? Hold on, I'll give you another choice. Don't do it yet. Or the three little aliens and the big bad robot. Now, thumbs up for the three little aliens and the big bad robot. Anybody? Anybody? How about this one? Robot! All right. It is the three little aliens and the big bad robot. I love this one. This one is by Margaret McNair and Mark Fearing. There once was a mama alien who had three little aliens. They were called Bork, Gork, and Nizlex. Bork, Nork, and Nuzlix grew up in an old-fashioned house in a snug, cozy crater on a tiny little planet. As the eons passed, their house got too crowded. It's time for you to go out into the universe and find a planet of your own, their mama told them, giving each a hug. But remember, watch out for the big, bad robot. He wants to chew you up. So Bork, Gork, and Nestlix took off. Bye, Mama! The 
all cried. Bye, kids, she shouted back. Always stick together, she added. Then she sniffed a bit and called me every once in a while. <coughs> the three aliens traveled far and fast. There's a cute planet, said Bork. Too hot, said Neslex. How about that one, asked Quark. Too crowded, replies Neslex. They darted around the meteor. Are we there yet, asked Bork. Just past the next bend, a big planet, swirling with dust, loomed into view. Bork spotted a shiny space rover zipping around its mountains and plains. Awesome, he, she said. I'm going to live in that. Ma said to stick together, called Neslex. But Bork had already zipped too far away to hear. Neslex and Gork traveled on. Neslex didn't like the looks of the next planet either. Nowhere to breathe, he gasped. Picky, picky, Gork said. Then just ahead, he spied a giant planet with huge golden rings around it. He jumped on a passing satellite and caught a ride on a ring. Whee! He squealed. This is what I call home. We can't live on a ring that goes around in circles, yelled Neslex. We'll get dizzy. But Gork wasn't paying any attention. Now Neslex was all alone. He traveled deeper and deeper into space until he spotted a massive blue pl planet far out in the galaxy. It had 13 moons and refreshing breezes. This faraway planet is where I'll build my home, he said. It will be safe from the big bad robot. Neslex found everything he needed to make sturdy walls. He gathered stardust to help his home to help keep his home bright and found solar panels to keep it warm. Then he grabbed a tall shiny telescope. This'll do for a chimney, he said, though no one had heard him. Rock by rock and roll by roll, Neslex built the perfect house. When he was finished, he sat down and locked the door. His house was not very zippy or cool, but it was very safe. And there was room enough for all three little aliens. I hope they come to visit me soon, said Neslex. Then one galactic down dawn, there was a rumbling in the universe. It was the big bad robot. Bork was so busy on her swirly red planet that she couldn't hear the robot's call. She didn't feel its giant footsteps as it leapt from star to star, and she didn't see the robot until it was right in front of her rover. Little alien, little alien, leaped the robot. Pull over, pull over. Not by the wheels of my trusty space rover, cried Bork bravely. Then I'll crack and smack and whack your house down, meet the robot. And just like that, the robot cracked and smacked and whacked Bork's shiny rover into a hundred pieces. Great moment, <laughs> As fast as the speed of sound, Bork chatted away. The robot close behind her, just as the robot was about to eat her up, she spotted Gork's satellite house. Gork! Gork! Help me! She cried. But Gork was having so much fun surfing on the rings of his giant planet that he didn't hear Bork's cries. He didn't see the robot chomping on comets and ripping open black holes until the big bad robot caught Gork's satellite in his huge metal claw. Little alien, little alien, it blinked, come out of hiding. Not by the orbit of this ring I'm riding, cried Gork stoutly. Then I will shatter and clatter and scatter your house down, gorked the robot. And before Gork could fly beneath the radar, that robot clattered and scattered and shattered Gork's satellite into a thousand pieces. <laughs> Gork barely escaped. Over here, called Bork. Stick together. 
At the speed of light, Bork and Gork blasted into space, with the big bad robot getting closer all the time. Where can we hide? asked Gork. Let's find Neslex, cried Bork. He'll know what to do. Neslex had heard the robot's roar. He had seen what was going on with the brother with his brother and sister through his telescope, and he was ready. He, has, he flashed his solar panels halfway across the universe. There he is, cried Bork and Gork, and they zoomed to Neslek's house as fast as a hustling asteroid. Get inside, cried Neslek. No time to waste. No sooner had Gork and Bork slammed Neslek's solid space rock door than they heard the robot rumbling. Little alien, little alien, it squeaked. Let me come in. Not by the slime on my chinny chin chin, cried Neslex. Then I will smack and I will crack and I will whack your house down, zeep the robot. The big bad robot bashed and crashed Neslex's strong solid house. Nothing happened. Then it pounded and smashed really hard. Not a crack. Then it loaded up its triple blaster and zapped that house, but good. That house would not fall down. So the robot forced its way into the little alien's house right down the chimney. <laughs> the aliens covered their ears and waited for the robot to chomp them up. But halfway down the telescope, that robot got stuck tight. It strained and it struggled. It moaned and it groaned. Neslik's house shook and it shuddered, but didn't fall down. It did not. The robot gave one more mighty cry and burst into a million pieces. Cool, said Bork. Awesome, said Gork. Just as I planned, said Neslik. There's just one thing missing, said Bork. Phone home, said Gork. So Neslik did. Ma, he said, we have the coziest house in the galaxy. Won't you come over and tuck us in? <laughs> Wasn't that really sweet? I'm not sure if you guys noticed this, but I want to show you one page here, which I think is the coolest page of all. Do you see, let's see this page right here? Ooh, how do I do that? There you go. It says the big bat robot says hi. And do you know who that is? That's the author of this book. How so cool is that? We have a signed copy. Who's cool now? Who's cool now? We're so cool. We're so cool. Well, thanks everybody for watching today. I hope you really liked those books. I was going to tell you what I was going to read tomorrow, just so you knew, but uh, I don't know. They're like over there or something, so I forgot. Uh, I'm sure they're wonderful because all our books are wonderful and they're what? They're all my favorite. That's right. Well, I hope you have a super, super, duper awesome day. Um, here's a little funky today. Sorry about that. Can't get cut. I tell ya, I need my Sheila in my life. <laughs> I hope you all are doing great, wonderful, you're happy, and you're healthy, and you're staying just having fun with family. Doesn't that sound good? Thumbs up. Uh, just a reminder, our books are all AR, so go and take an AR test, and that'll make your teacher super duper happy. All right, you guys, see you tomorrow.